what's up guys welcome back got another project here I'm getting ready to start on thought I'd share it with you we got a custom part here we got to make for a customer here and, and they uh, they got something that they thought of that they could probably use it has something to do with mounting a wheel on it so he uh, he came to me with with a couple sketches here and, and asked me could I make this up for him so this is uh, this is the sketch of what the part will look like. You got a flange with a piece of tubing that's welded to it. Sticks out about five inches, and we've got a hole pattern here. And so this is what they had actually brought me here. And I was actually able they, they traced this, so it was really close to the the proper sizing there. I was actually able to measure this and come up with the bolt circle that I needed to know. And this is all metric, so it was it was actually pretty easy to figure it out once I was doing my measurements and everything. So what I've come up with is this is a 120 millimeter bolt circle right here. It'd be five holes, drilled and tapped, 10 millimeter, 1.25 pitch. Okay, and uh, luckily I actually already had this steel plate burned out. This is something that I, I keep a couple around for another job that I do. The, uh, the rollers that I build. So I had a couple of these still. So that'll work out pretty good. And so also for the center, I got this piece of tubing here. And this is one by one and three quarter steel tubing. So this is perfect for what I need to go in the center right here. The, the OD is not critical. Even though that, that circle is drawn there, the, the OD of this isn't really critical. And the uh, one inch ID, is already clearance for something else so there's plenty of clearance there so what we'll do this has got to be five inches long so I got plenty of material there I can part this off clean both ends up what I'll do is we'll chuck this plate up I'll bore it and uh, machine a, a weld prep on both sides put a little V there and then I'll turn this piece and it'll basically look like that we'll have a little turned in here that I can just press it in there, give it a light press fit to keep everything nice and straight. And we'll weld both sides. The, the other side where it's pressed in, you know, it'll be flush across there, but I'll have a little V here on this side that I'll weld it up. And then once it's welded, then I'll be able to chuck the whole piece back up in the lathe and we'll turn the OD and face it off nice and true. And then the last step, we'll take it over to the milling machine. I'll use the super spacer and uh, chuck it up in the vertical position, find the center, offset for the hole pattern, and drill and tap our, our five hole pattern. So that is the project at hand. So getting ready to get started on it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and chuck this piece up and start getting the whole board in it. I bead blasted it, and I went over there and just uh, with the flapper wheel remove that little edge from it being cut out. That was, that was a plasma cut piece down at my buddy's welding shop. So I put the three jaw on here, reverse the jaws, and we're just going to use that to quickly and easily hold this piece. And there is a slight bit of kerf to the plate here. So what I'm going to do is put the, the largest part of it, which would be this side here, I'm going to put it to the back. Okay. Alright, that looks good. So center drill it, drill it with a half inch drill, and I'm going to use a 3 8 taper sink drill to uh, get the hole in here, and then we're going to bore it to inch and a half. By the way, a little tip, I've always been in the habit of putting the chuck keys back in the chuck so that 
they're always with the chuck whenever you're ready to use it. That's another one of my pet peeves is you can't find the, the, the chuck key whenever you go to use this thing. I got my bar set up. I'm using a one inch bar that holds a 3 8 square tool bit. This is a, this is a high speed steel tool bit there. Alright, see where we're at. Okay, one inch 385. Got about 10 thousandths over. So I'm going to take this to inch and a half and then we'll machine the tubing to for a light press, press fit in there. I'm going to run at the same speed 180, uh, 5 thousandths feed rate. Big old chip landed right there in my shirt. <laughs> right in my shirt pocket. All right, that was 50 thousandths. Okay, one inch 440. Take another 50. speed it up so I know I got about 10 I'm just going to use my calipers for this measurement here and whenever I machine the tube I'll make sure I get an accurate reading on it here okay <coughs> I'm just going to take five and then we'll make another cleanup cut So it looks like about seven. I'm just gonna dial in seven and and that'll that's where it'll be. Okay. I'd say that's close to inch and a half there, huh? Close enough. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this tool bit out. That was a little tool bit that I was using right there. Just a little little chip breaker. And I've got a I've got a V tool here. Let's see which one I want to use. I'll probably use this one right here. Uh, a lot of people call this chamfering tool. Perfect for the 90 degree end on the boring bar. So what I want to do is, um, I think I had mentioned bevel on both sides, but I'm not, I'm not going to bevel both sides. I'm going to chamfer one side. And the uh, one side, I'm going to cut a bevel on here, and that'll be for a, a, a weld prep. We'll fill it in when we weld it. I think I'll just start with the back side and uh, hit that chamfer. I'm just looking at it here on the back side. Okay. Now I'm going to come to this side and cut us a weld bevel here. All right, it's starting to ring on me because of the speed and the thin the thinness of the plate. I think that'll be fine right there because we'll have a bead on both sides. So we'll machine the tube with a with a bevel on it also to kind of match that one there. All right. So, all right, that piece is going to come out of the lathe now, and I want to set up my four jaw chuck to do the machining on the tube because my uh, I just don't trust my three jaw. It doesn't run perfectly true, and I want it to run 
true. All right, got the forge all set. We're getting ready to indicate. A lot of you guys love watching me indicate, so I'm going to go ahead and show you this. And, and you see, it's not tight yet, just so I'm not tricking you. Snug up two of the jaws. We'll get the steered indicator over here. Look at that. About ten thousandths, huh? So what I'm doing, I'm watching my needle. I'm not even really concerned about what the line is, what the number is. I'm just watching the needle for high, low. See, high, low, high, low. So, you know, I'm watching that for the high. So it's actually in between these two jaws right here, right? It doesn't matter. You just go to the closest one and adjust it because it's going to eventually bring it back to one of the jaws that you have to move. So, you know, I'll just go to that one and we'll snug it a little bit. See, there's your low, there's your high. We'll snug that one a little and that one was loose. So I automatically know I'm going to the 180 jaw and I need to snug it up. And I just keep working it. I just keep... Usually what I'm doing in my mind, I believe, is I'm, I'm watching for the low. And once I see that low, I automatically pull it around 180 to that jaw. So right there where it went in the thou. Okay, that's not hardly moving at all. It's just barely flickering. So, all right, that's pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use this this end here. Let me grab my calipers. So, this end's already been turned just over an inch and a half. We're about 35 over, so I'm going to use this right here. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, we'll just part it off, and then I'll machine it to inch and a half to give it the fit that I need on, on the plate, and then we'll cut the weld bevel out here on the end, okay? So, um, all right, be right back. I need my glasses. All right, so the plate's quarter inch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it a little bit long, and we'll make a little face cut. And I'm using the eighth inch part of the scale there, but I can move it down like this. I got it set about on 5 16 So we'll part that bit off right there. Let's see how this does. Running 180, just hand feeding. Just keeping quite a bit of pressure on the tool bit. Okay. Part tool out. And we'll put a turning tool in. Okay, got me a one to two mic, and uh, I know I'm behind you here. I'm just I'm getting another measurement on my my bore of the plate here, and I keep getting 1.500 with my Mitsutoya calipers. So I think I'm just going to shoot for something like one inch 502 or 501. I don't want it super tight. Want it to hold it, hold it square in there. All right, so we're at one inch, five eighteen. I'm gonna go ahead and take another ten. Okay, 509. 
And I think I'll hit, we're going to dial in six and see where we hit it at. All right, 503 right there. So I'll see if I can hand fit it. May do have to do a little bit of filing there, but uh, I don't want to turn it anymore. So if you remember, I left it a little bit long. We left it a 16th long. And the reason for that is whenever I chuck this piece up after it's on here and it's welded, we're gonna take a face cut and it, it'll make it as long as I feel the weld bead in good you'll be you'll have a nice solid piece of steel all the way across that's what we're going to shoot for anyway all right so now I need to cut a, a weld bevel on here so let me get that I'm going to use the same kind of tool chamfering tool and I'm going to take a quick little measurement on the plate here and I'm about an eighth inch back so I'm gonna need a little more than that because of the the length here Yeah, so I got to come on back with that. Okay, a little more. I'll touch that up there. All right, that'll work. So you see the quarter inch mark, that's where the edge of our plate will be. All right. Uh, well, I already know this is going to be probably a little too tight for what I want it. I ain't got far to go in there. So I'm probably just going to take my little file here. Do a little bit of hand filing. Okay, I think that'll work right there. We'll go over to the we'll go over to the arbor press and see if we can get that pressed in there. All right. Well, we can't press it in yet. We got to go ahead and part it part it to length. I just made me a little mark there to uh, kind of reference where I know I got to where I got to part it. Get her indicated again. Okay, one thousandths. All right, that's, uh, that's good. Okay, what I'm going to do here, use my hook scale, and I'm going to grab the back. Okay, there it is. This is not a critical length, so close is close enough. All right, I'm just looking down at here. 
Okay. It looks like five inches, so we'll leave the carriage set up there. Unhook my scale. All right, we'll go ahead and get her parted off. All right, so that's going to be the open end. What I'd like to do is go ahead and, and just clean that face up, make it look good, and then we'll put a couple chamfers on there so that there's no sharp edges and it looks nice. I'm just going to touch it. Got my chamfering tool. We'll do the same thing. I gotta bring it up just a little for the, uh, the inside. Okay, I'll just hit it with a little emery and that part's ready. All right, I got you over here on the greener arbor press and we're gonna give it a shot. It should be about a thousandths interference, which can sometimes be difficult to get, get in. what this is doing. It's want to stop. There it is. Yeah, it's shaving a little bit off. You can see the little splinters there. Uh, but I'm looking at it and trying to see if it's it looks like it's down flat on the shoulder so I'm going to give it another little squeeze here just to try to make sure that we're there. Okay. Alright, so we'll come over here and uh, we'll fire up TIG welder. TIG weld that up. We'll run us a bead around the outside. Hopefully I can do a good job with the TIG weld on this one. I'm going to use some 332nd steel TIG rods. These are ER70S-2. I'm about out of these things. I got to get me some more.
just using the lay wire technique. I get my puddle started and I lay my rod in there and I just let it flow it in. That's not looking bad, but I think I'm, I had such a deep V, I'm going to have to go back over it again to build it up some. Too bad but I'm gonna go over it again and, and uh, I'm gonna make sure I got enough weld there so that when I face it off I know it'll clean up metal there to, to face off so now we got to do the back side things getting hot all right now for the other side let's see if I can do this I'm just going to use a uh, just a technique where I'm I've got the cup rested against the part and I'm just rocking it kind of like uh, almost like pipe welders walking the cup but uh, it, if you can get it right, it usually makes a pretty good looking bead.
right, let's see if I can finish this off. One more pass here. Too bad. I think it. I think it'll pass. It'll work. <laughs> so I'm gonna let this sucker cool off, and and then we'll go back to the lathe, do some more turning and facing. Okay.